now after driving at the WRX uh, in uh, California, uh, we're going to talk to uh, Charles Truett, the editor-in-chief of importtuner.com, who will share his uh, impressions of the new car that we drove uh, in California. Well, now in my favorite part of the show, uh, my sharing the impressions with uh, my uh, driver partners. Um, so we just drove uh, for about, what, uh, almost 200, over 200 miles in the new so 2015 Subaru WRX. What's your first thought about it? Uh, I love it. It's really rigid, and I really do like turbo cars. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, what, what about the automatic transmission versus the manual? Um, the automatic, I didn't have too much experience with because we had a little <laughs> run-in with the uh, highway patrol, and they kind of told me to slow down and warned me not to do it again. So, <laughs> but uh, in fact, you know, you know, Justice, I have to say, we weren't speeding that much. I mean, we were going in like they, no. he claims what fifty-five and a thirty-five or something like that. Something like that. Something ridiculous. But I mean, it was it was bad. But uh, anyways, uh, the car really, I, I agree with you. It, it feels really, really stiff and like. Uh, the the the, um, the engine is, is more than powerful enough for this kind of, of car. Which, even though it's a little bit heavier than the previous generation, they told us, but still a pretty good drive, huh? Yeah, yeah. They somehow balanced it out. The steering input's really really nice and sensitive, and the brakes work well, so it doesn't feel heavy at all to me. Yeah, and uh, Charles, you do uh, in your publication uh, specializes in Japanese cars and like. Uh, in cars that are modified, like tuning. So uh, this is like the perfect car for that kind of uh, of uh, hobby, right? Yeah, the WRX has been really successful the last few generations that they've had. Um, people do everything to these cars. It's really popular to upgrade the turbocharger, uh, suspension, interior, exterior, everything. So if, uh, if you could uh, have a project like this, how much money would you spend and what would you do with it? Ah, uh, it'd be sky's the limit. I would love to put like a hundred grand into this car. Really? That's yeah. Much? And yeah. what would you do? That's a lot of money. It but, would be a lot of fun. Yeah, but what, what, what? Like what, the most realistic thing? What most people do about with these cars? Most people probably just change out the wheels, tighten up the suspension a little bit so they'd lower it, and then a few, few little things added to that. Would they wouldn't put in a hundred thousand? They'd probably stop around five to ten. Yeah, well, the, the car, uh, it's a very good car to begin with, right? I mean, to, like, yeah. for, for, like, it, it, like the, the, the looks of it is really nice. The actual, like, regular wheels are pretty cool-looking, black, and uh, with cool design and everything. Yeah, I think that's why it's so popular. Out of the box, it's, it's probably the best car I can think of, like, for a daily driver that wants to have some spirited, fun driving. It could, you can take it to the track, bone stock, and you can have a lot of fun. It's all-wheel drive. It's turbo. It's a four-cylinder, so it gets decent gas mileage. It can do everything. It can, you can go get groceries in it. It's got four doors. You can put a lot of people into it. You can go up to the mountains and go skiing in the snow. You can do anything with this car. Yeah, Subaru is, is putting out a lot of good products lately. And even though this is not the, one of the most uh, popular in terms of sales, it is very popular in terms of, uh, of the fan base that, that this car has. And, like, they're very loyal with this car, huh? Yeah, they, um, Subaru, I think, has the number one loyalty of, like, any OEM manufacturer. It's just, and if you ever tried to look for a used Subaru, you'll see, like, the resale value is really high. People that know about Subaru want, want, or are willing to pay quite a bit for them. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about information about your publication? Where can our audience look uh, for what you do? I run Import Tuner Magazine, which has been around since, I think, about 1998, we're based in Southern California, and we cover the import lifestyle car culture. So that's mainly Japanese cars and aftermarket, the aftermarket scene, modified cars, any, everything from drifting to racing to car shows to import models and everything. So where can we – the web page so we can look for it? Um, you can pick up a copy at any, pub, any newsstand, any Walmart, any – Barnes & Nobles, any 7-Eleven, or you can just get online and check us out at importtuner.com. Or if you have Instagram or Facebook, you can find us there as well. Excellent. Well, uh, hopefully the next time we drive together, we don't see many cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to do that again. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. I think we did fine. It was a golf ball, I think. You ruined our day in a little way. But we didn't get a ticket, so it was good. Yeah, that was a good it. part. Thank you, Charles. Right, thank you, everyone.